what's up everybody, Game Dad here, coming at you guys with another collection video, and this time we're starting a new series showcasing everything in my PlayStation 1 collection. So come with me as we check out part one. 102 Dalmatians Puppies to the Rescue was released by Crystal Dynamics in 2000, and honestly this game really just felt like a Spyro game, but with a 102 Dalmatians kind of shell to it. I mean, it was fun enough. It definitely seems like a little kid's kind of game. Nothing that, you know, a teenager or anything would have played at the time. But it was fun to kind of run around, get the little collectibles, you know, do some little platform jumping. Uh, it had some rolling techniques to it. But there was nothing really, like, you know, earth-shattering about this game. Aladdin in Nazira's Revenge was released by Argonaut Games in 2001, and I gotta say, other than having kind of a like fun, cartoony feel to it uh, that translated pretty well from the screen to a 3D model, I mean, this game, it, it really felt empty. I mean, yeah, it was kind of a collect-a-thon kind of thing. You go around, you get your coins and different objects. But as I played through the first bit of this game, it was more dialogue pop-up than anything. There wasn't really any kind of solid substance to the game. All-Star Slam and D-Ball was released by Axis in 2001, and I mean, it had a fun premise going for it, but I really did not understand the control scheme behind it. I kind of got what you were supposed to do when you were passing, and obviously it's a dodgeball, so you know, you're trying to take out the other people uh, on the opposing team, but I just, I didn't really understand how I was really supposed to control and make it so that the other team wasn't catching the ball. Honestly, I would definitely prefer something like Super Dodgeball uh, or any other kind of dodgeball game, really. This one just, it didn't really feel that great. Up next, we have Army Men World War Final Front, released by the 3DO company in 2001. And honestly, this game is super clunky. I mean, the whole viewing mechanic just does not operate smoothly. It's super slow. And even though this is like a PS1 era game, I really don't think that that's an excuse. There are plenty of games from this era that operate perfectly smooth and run great. And this game, it just did not. I mean, I remember playing the Army Men games on the N64, and those ran fine. So I'm not really sure what happened with this one, but I would not recommend it. Up next, we have a 3D version of Asteroids that was released by Activision in 1998. And, I mean, it takes all of the gameplay that you would expect from an Asteroids game and just gives it a nice 3D skin to it. The gameplay is pretty smooth. Uh, the kind of, like... The, I don't know what you would call it, the ice mechanic, I, I guess, where you kind of just float through space. It's a little more slippery than in, say, an Asteroids arcade game, but it's really not that bad, and they do add some extra things like uh, shield power-ups and different things that are actually pretty fun to use. Up next we have Blade, released by Hammerhead LTD in 2000, and honestly, I think this game was more of just a cash grab than anything. I mean, the overall gameplay is super clunky, but, you know, the, I think the game makers probably figured, hey, it's Blade, the movie was awesome, let's make a game, people will buy it. I mean, that's definitely the vibe that I got when playing this game. The controls, they were okay. They weren't the smoothest, but they weren't awful. But the whole targeting mechanic where it just lights everyone up in green, it really did not play out well. Up next is Blood Omen Legacy of Cain, released by Silicon Knights in 1996. And while this game definitely does have a 1996 feel to it, I've always appreciated games like this because I've personally always been a big Diablo fan and big fan of uh, anything that Blizzard makes. And while this wasn't made by Blizzard, obviously, it definitely had the same kind of feel as like a Diablo 1 kind of game or like a Baldur's Gate where it has that RPG top-down kind of view and you just kind of go to town with real-time battles and... You just enjoy the game. Ah, now everybody loves a good Bomberman game, and this one was released by Metro in 1999. And what was kind of cool is whenever you first boot up the game, you get to use the quote-unquote modern version, or you can play with more of a classic skin to it, uh, which has more of a Super Nintendo feel to it. But this one, it was honestly... I mean, I like this kind of modern shell to it. It gives it just enough of a graphical update 
um, to make it look really nice. But overall, I mean, it's the same gameplay that you know and love from any Bomberman game. You just take out all the enemies. Bust and Move 4 was released by Taito, or Taito, however you want to pronounce that, in 1999. And honestly, I love this kind of game. Just a classic game where, you know, it takes me back to my childhood, playing different arcade machines, things like that. And just putting in quarter after quarter, just trying to solve the various puzzles and always wondering what that next little colored orb is going to be. So as you can see right here, I'm playing the puzzle mode for this one, where you have to figure out how you can solve the puzzle and get rid of all of the different little colored orbs before they either hit the ground or before you outweigh one side with the other and end up losing the match. All right, now up next we have Castlevania Symphony of the Night, released by Konami in 1997, and this is arguably the best Castlevania ever made. I mean, this game has everything you love from all the Castlevania games, all rolled into one package without any of the extra junk that just made the games unfun or too difficult. This game, while definitely it is difficult, it's still fair, it's fun, the graphics are awesome in it, and it takes kind of a new approach. I mean, the overall gameplay is basically the same, but kind of a new approach to the overall storyline, which I really enjoy. All right, now up next we have Chess Master 2 by Starfear Interactive, and this was released in 1999. And, I mean, it's just a 3D chess game. There isn't really anything crazy or fancy to this. I mean, when I was growing up, I remember having, uh, what was it, Battle Chess. And that one was kind of fun where, you know, you'd make a move and anytime you're going to take somebody out, it'd show like a little animation of them battling and stuff. So that was kind of cool. But this does not have any of that. It's just a 3D chess game. And fun little known fact, I was actually my high school's chess champion. So a little tidbit of knowledge for you. Up next is Chrono Cross, released by Squaresoft in 2000. Now, while this one isn't like a direct sequel per se to Chrono Trigger on the Super Nintendo. It's kind of like a spiritual successor quasi sequel kind of thing. Uh, the movement overall is pretty slow in this game, but the battle mechanic is really nice. Definitely has that uh, Secret of Mana, Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy kind of battle system to it. And obviously that works, otherwise those games wouldn't be getting sequel after sequel. But this one is pretty fun. I really liked the PlayStation take on it versus the 16-bit era with Chrono Trigger. All right, so up next we have Command & Conquer, released by Westwood Studios in 1997. And honestly, the Command & Conquer franchise basically like defined my childhood of gaming. I, this is what really got me into RTS kind of gaming. This, and which led to StarCraft, and then eventually that just led into my obsession with Blizzard games, but I love the Command & Conquer franchise. Not necessarily the newer stuff, but these older games, oh, they're awesome. Up next is Command & Conquer Red Alert Retaliation, released by Westwood Studios in 1998. And this one, it... I really enjoyed this one because I have so many fond memories of playing this game uh, with my best friend from childhood. I mean, since preschool, really, so nearly 30 years now. And him and I would play this game to death. Man, we would play this game all the time. And almost more than any other game on his PlayStation because I didn't have one growing up. And it's just great Command & Conquer fun, but with a graphical update, a better interface suited more for consoles and just overall super fun gameplay. Now we have Cool Borders 3, released by 989 Studios in 1998. And, I mean, this game is okay, in my opinion. I mean, I do like snowboarding games. I like the more modern renditions like Amped and uh, other games like that. But from this era, I was always more of a SSX kind of player. I just enjoyed those more. They had a more fun vibe to them. This one was just like a little too real for me, I think. And it was kind of clunky with the controls. I mean, it was improvements over uh, Cool Borders 1 and 2. But yeah, not really my kind of game. 
Up next is my first obsession with this game company, and that is Crash Bandicoot, released by Naughty Dog in 1996. Now, this game took on a whole new approach, and it actually took on a whole game company. I don't know if many people remember the old uh, Crash Bandicoot commercials where it's a dude in a Crash uh, mascot costume, and he's just out in front of the Nintendo headquarters just totally talking smack. Uh, I mean, commercials like that were things that really defined the PlayStation because it just showed that they had way more attitude than everyone else, and this game totally brought that attitude to life. Now here we have Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back, also released by Naughty Dog, this time in 1997, and this took basically the same formula that they had. They did some slight tweaking to graphics, nothing major, but they just took that winning formula they had from the first Crash Bandicoot game and it just built upon it. So they added a few new game mechanics, they added some new creatures and stuff, and then they really... Uh, it took the time to develop and flesh out the storyline a little more. That way, players would become a little more invested in the game overall. Now, up next, we have Crash Bandicoot Warped, which is the third one in this trilogy, and this is also released by Naughty Dog and in 1998. Now, this one isn't my favorite in the trilogy, but, I mean, it's still fun. It uses the same kind of formula, but by this time, it was just starting to get a little bit tired. They really needed to change it up by the time of this third one. Graphically, it's definitely the best, in my opinion. They really smoothed out the polygons and really added some new effects, like, as you can see in this gameplay, there's some rain going on and a little bit of particle physics stuff. All right, the Die Hard Trilogy by Probe Entertainment, released in 1996. Now, I reviewed this same game on my 3DO collection video, and I gotta say, it is way easier to control on the PlayStation. It's still a super clunky game. As you can see, the character models are just a complete mess. I mean, they could have done way better than what they did here. I mean, all you gotta do is just look at any other game on the PlayStation with mildly better graphics and see that they could have done a better job. I mean, I do like you can kind of blow up cars and it's pretty easy to find and target enemies, but overall this game is just still super clunky. Up next is Driver, released by Reflections Interactive in 1999. And this is another game that my best friend and I would always play anytime I was over at his place. And this game, it was super fun because while, yeah, it was a driving game, it had racing aspects, it was more about learning how to do like crazy car tricks and stuff like that, but not even things that were super outlandish, like, you know, oh, jump a building or something like that. It was all really common stuff. So, like, as you can see here on the checklist, you know, do a burnout, do something with the handbrake, do slalom, 180, 360, all those kind of things. And up next, we have the Family Card Games Fun Pack, released by Bottom Up in 2002, and it is exactly what you would expect it to be. It is just a bunch of different card games that you can play, and you can play them on your PlayStation. Really wasn't anything special to it. I mean, here I got a game of Blackjack going, because they had a bunch of different names of card games that I did not recognize. I mean, they had poker, obviously, but they had a few other things that I haven't heard of before, so I had no idea how to play them. So I just went with this classic right here, Blackjack. So there you have it, everyone. That is everything in part one of my current PlayStation 1 collection. Now, were there any games in this video that you have in your collection? Tell me about it down in the comments below. Now, be sure to check out part two of my PlayStation 1 collection next week. As always, I'm GameDad. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you later.